The Fed's been good at signaling ahead of time so the markets don't get spooked. And look, we've already seen a huge move in the Treasury market the last couple of days. So I think the market's already ahead of this, and that's what you want, right? You don't want the Fed to come out with a surprise decision about interest rates, and all of a sudden the markets go the wrong way. So I think a lot of that damage is already done. Uh, hence, Monday, we saw you know, a cruel sell-off, and I, I estimated it. You know, the Dow's at like 30,000. You only take about 32 days for it to go zero at the pace of yesterday. And then we can own all the assets. Uh, every, you know, Don't all, do this to us, Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> and then you own all the physical assets for nothing, right? You could own the planes for Apple, Microsoft. We can just divide it all up. But you know, I don't think the market's going to zero, but I do think that a lot of this repricing uh, is happening very dramatically in real time. So what's likely to happen then? If we do, in fact, hear from the Fed yesterday, uh, tomorrow, coming back and saying they are going for that 75 basis point hike, what's the reaction? I mean, we've seen the sell-off over the last two days. S&P 500 now in bear market territory. Do we see a rally on the back of a little more clarity and some relief that the Fed's going to move more aggressively? Yeah, I think that's possible here, right? Because I think the dire situation is already being priced in, right? We've seen equities this year go down dramatically, especially anything that's tech-related. Uh, Bitcoin right now, oh, yes. which I, you know, I did call a bubble on your show many months ago, but I you do did. digress. And on my podcast, I talk about that as well. But bottom line is you're getting a lot of deleveraging right now in the system. You know, the markets are doing all the heavy lifting for the Fed. And in my mind is, look, you've got this economy that's red hot, right? I mean, look, you have unemployment's come down to a 50-year low. Uh, GDP growth over the last five quarters has been over 4%. It's like a runaway train. And what's the Fed trying to do? They're trying to put the brakes on, and they're doing that, right? You're starting to see it. Lumber prices have come down. Copper prices have come down. So my, my thoughts are, and going back to optionality, is maybe later this year, if things do slow down, maybe the Fed can be less hawkish. And in my mind, that's pretty bullish, right? Because at some point, you know, they surprise and they don't hike as much as they're hiking right now. That could be very, very good for them. Well, I guess, though, the question is, how does the train stop, though? Does it hit a wall, or can it slow down and get that soft landing? What do, you, what do you think is the outcome here? I actually think the Fed's doing a great job. I'm probably not in the majority on that opinion, but I think they are slowing things down. It's not coming to a halt, right? But we're already seeing that again in some of the commodity prices. And I do think that they may get that soft landing, where things slow enough that they have the optionality later where they don't have to tighten too much and you know, take the economy off its rails and you know, probably good chance we'll re avoid a recession here, no matter what they tell you. I mean, I don't think a recession is a foregone conclusion, like a lot of the headlines are telling you. Um, let's talk about strategy. You're a big value guy. We were talking yesterday about the, really the broad-based sell-off that we saw. Even the energy names were down. What do you do right now? Do you add to your portfolio? Are you looking? Are you finding good buys out there? I mean, what's what's the thing? He's thinking? not going into crypto. Yeah. It sounds like so. <laughs> yeah, not going to you're not going into crypto. You're not going into growth. You're not doing Tesla. Yeah. But what exactly? What's the thinking yeah. right now? I think you buy with impunity here. Look, I mean, as a long-term investor, you, you buy when there's blood in the streets. There's blood in the streets right now, and it's kind of like revenge of the nerds. Now, how horrible was it to go to a party in the last year and be like, ah, oh, I don't own crypto. Everyone's making all this money in crypto. I feel left out. Well, all the crypto bros uh, are losing their shirt. You're getting margin calls, and that's selling off all those names that your grandfather loves or your grandmother loves, right? I mean, all those old school value stocks, which have held up way better here. Uh, if you look at a portfolio of value stocks, it's down less than 10% this year. The only uh, bear market you're seeing right now is in growth, disruptive technology, and Bitcoin. But the reality of it is now you're getting on. If you take tech out of the S&P 500, you're trading at 14 times Ford earnings. That's so cheap. That's been as cheap as it's been in years. So I think you have a gift from the gods here as a long-term investor to buy. Well, but at the same time, though, if you're getting into value, I mean, it's not necessarily uh, good for your portfolio because, as you mentioned, you're just down single digits instead of maybe down deep double digits. I mean, you look at, for example, the banks. I mean, I saw a, a note from Wells Fargo. Mortgage banking income could be down 50% from the first quarter. That's one of those value stocks, right? So, I mean, how much of a, how thick of a, of, of a skin do you have to have to get into there right now? I don't think you have that much. I think we've already priced in some sort of recession. If we have one, we don't have one. I think most of the damage is done here. You may get some more selling on the downside. But at this point, you know, how much are you going to get? I think you've probably seen the magnitude's already been done. The damage has been done at this point. You can buy anywhere in here as a long-term investor, unless you need a yield to, to lunch today. And uh, if you're not a trader and you're an investor, like, this is a gift from the gods. You got to take advantage of it to create long-term wealth. And you know, for our clients, this is when you buy. You need an inflation hedge. Stocks historically are one of the best inflation hedge you can possibly have. Dividend yields are going up this year. Earnings are going up this year. And we may still have positive GDP growth. I'm still in that camp. And these are all good things. So let's end with three names. 
Three names that you think investors should be looking at right now. We just talked about the banks. I think the banks probably have been, uh, you know, aggressively sold here. So like JP Morgan's a great place to buy right now. Loan activity should go up this year. You should get a steeper yield curve at some point. Still like energy. I think energy is a longer term play. Valuations are still very attractive there. Um, in addition to that, since we're on Yahoo today, I even like Verizon right now. Um, you know, I think it holds. No school. longer the parent. Yeah, we're not. Oh, <laughs> I take that back. Formerly, <laughs> formerly. Formerly, um, but they were great when they owned you. So, yeah, I think any of those old school value names right now are great to have in your portfolio. And again, you know, don't think twice here if you're a long-term investor.